Okay, welcome everybody. Um, I want to talk a bit about workflows, uh, workflows in the Java world, workflow in the, in the open source world with uh, BPM N2 and something uh, we built, which is named Camunda BPM. I will show that. I will do actually a lot of live demo. And I also want to encourage you, if you have any questions, let me know. I think we get that somehow uh, working in the audience here as well. Uh, my name is Bernd Rücker. I'm one of um, basically co-founders of Camunda. I have a lot of experiences with Java EE. So that's basically my background. I wrote an EJB book um, like years ahead. And I'm working for Workflow with, uh, for about 10, 12 years now, which is pretty interesting actually, so I never get bored by the topic. And uh, uh, we're seeing really a lot of things evolving over the last 10 years. And I think at the moment it's a really good time to have a look in workflow and have a look in BPM. Um, not sure, maybe, maybe it's interesting to know who, who knows BPMN already, the acronym. Okay, that's more than half of the audience. That's pretty cool. Um, I want to only show quick introduction in BPMN2, not much. Um, but I got really passionate about BPMN. We wrote the book like four years ago, I think, or four or five years ago. We already have the fourth edition, and we worked a lot with BPMN. And that was pretty cool over the last years. Um, just a quick word about Camunda. Camunda, we are a small company. We are based in uh, Germany, in Berlin. Um, we currently have 30 employees, around 30 people. We're building an open source BPM platform that was basically grown out of our experience we had in, in consulting times. My personal past was um, uh, doing a lot of projects with JWAS JBPM, for example. Uh, we, we have an office in San Francisco this year, and yeah, that's basically it. Um, I wanted to motivate workflow pretty quickly. Um, let's imagine you have any, any application, any Java application. I don't want to go into details if that's HTML5 or it's JSF or whatever, but a typical Java or Java E application looks a bit like that, right? You have an order application, you might have some entities, an order, you might have a service layer, which might be um, EJB, CDI beans, Spring beans, doesn't matter. I have a user interface and some I have a persistence, right? Makes sense. I hope so. Um, if I look at that application and you might get uh, requirements like this, okay, if the order cannot be shipped because we don't have the goods in stock, um, then we want to call the customer, maybe not the small shops for, for where you buy or whatever supplies do that, but, but if there are bigger orders, maybe they want to call the customer, convince him, hey, we don't have this one, but maybe you want to buy option B. Option B is cool as well. Um, but we have to do that pretty quickly because if we call him in one week and say, okay, we don't have that stuff in stock, they say, okay, you knew that one, one week in advance. That's not that nice from you to wait that long. Okay, I think maybe understandable requirement. If you wanna, wanna plug that into your Java or Java E application, what you normally do is you have to touch a lot of code here and there. So what you may want to do is you want to want to have an interface for some people, some clerks, which are checking, constantly checking which people to call. Um, then in order to implement that, you might need a, need a um, yeah, method to provide the data. You might have a new filter, JPA query. You might have new attributes on the order in order to get um, which, which orders are already shipped or not. And um, yeah, the, the most interesting part is that with the, with the escalation, with the timing. So you need some timing mechanism, maybe you use an EJB timer or cron or whatever, but you have to implement something with timing, right? So the, basically the small requirement is really, really all over the place. And you basically it's hard to see the, the original requirement to see the process within there. Um, so it's brave to do that, it will work, but the more you have these kind of requirements, the clutter it gets the implementation. Um, yeah, so you basically bury all the requirements in code, and that's actually not the nicest way to do it, because I, then you normally lose track of how the process really works, right? If that's really spread to code, it's hard to find it later on. And um, normally you have maybe a process model from the beginning, from the requirements documents, but that, that doesn't help anymore because it, it evolved over time. You changed the process, so the, um, basically the requirements document is not, not um, yeah, it's outdated. Um, I quickly changed to the code in a minute, but that's an interesting, um, yeah, interesting thing you can see out there, I think. Today is the, um, the startup day here as well, so we have a couple of 